All right, so you can see there, we know that when x squared is positive, we have a smiley face graph, right? We know that. So, so when x, no, that was me getting a message because I've clearly left something open. So when x squared is positive, we have a smiley face graph. When x squared is negative, we have a frowny face graph, yes? yes. So that means this has a minimum turning point. Remember we did turning points last year? So if it's a smiley face graph, it has a minimum turning point, which means if it's a frowny face graph, it has a maximum turning point. Now, I have told you this before, and now we're finally going to use it. We have been working on how to get the coordinates of the turning point. Now I'm just going to show you the things that you already know how to do. Now, a reminder as well, if you turn over to page 18, that it talks about your discriminants. So it's got some visual things about whether you have two distinct or two real roots. Um, two roots is when obviously you've got two x-intercepts. Then when you have one repeated root or equal roots, you need to get used to both versions of the words. It just touches it like that. And with no real roots, it looks like that. So what we have also been doing is completing the square. Right? So if we're asked to complete the square, let's just do one of those, okay? And then I'm going to show you exactly how it's useful because we haven't been using it yet. So let's say I do x squared plus 8x minus 1. All right, let's complete the square. What do I get? Okay, please don't skip steps just to make sure we're all following what's going on. I get what you're doing. 8x. What? Plus 16 minus 16, right? Because 4 squared is 16. All right, so then I know you were all skipping to this step, which is excellent. I'm very happy you can do that. Okay, so we've completed the square. This is the turning point. Ta-da, we already know how to do it. You make this number negative and then keep whatever this is. All right. So if it's in the form, so the way the book likes to use P's and Q's, for some reason, we always use P's and Q's. So if I have X plus P plus Q and that's squared, the turning point is always negative P and Q. Right. So this is the opposite sign. This is correct. That is always our turning point. So if you can complete the square, you've got a turning point. OK, that is relatively simple. Now, another way that you can get the turning point, we did last year, and I'm going to remind you of another way to get the turning point. Do we remember this? Negative B over 2A, that got us our axis of symmetry. Remember, we were looking for that last year. So if I did negative B over 2A, what do I have? What's negative B? And what's 2A? Which is? See how it's negative 4? <laughs> Same thing. And then if I want the y coordinate, I just substitute it back in here and you would get negative 17. Unsurprising, right? This is 16 minus 12 minus 1. Well, that doesn't work. 16 minus oh, 32. <laughs> 32 minus 1 is negative 17. So that works, right? So both of these versions work, but that is why we've been practicing completing the square. You are going to be asked to do this in today's exercise and on your assessment next week. So often the exam questions say, first, put it in this form, right? So often there's a little A in front. What difference does the A make? None, right? It makes no difference whatsoever. It might be the difference between this answer, where these are the solutions, and this answer, right? So either way, the solutions are the same. You've just got a different turning point, which would mean your turning point is different, but this A makes no difference whatsoever to whatever's going on. It's basically taking out a common factor. It stretches the graph without swapping the solutions, okay? So this A doesn't make any difference to how you answer this bit, okay? What? Crikey, mate. All right. Uh, let's just save that. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is some examples of how to actually read this stuff. Okay. Then you change the sign. 
So okay. instead, yeah, so you just change whatever sign is in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are a bit easy. Let's do this one. Okay, so I've got y equals 3 minus 8x minus 2x squared. And I'm going to ask you to put it in this form. Okay, so that is what you're being asked to do. And then you want the turning point. Okay, that's what I'm asking for. And I want to know if it's a max, max or min. Can you already tell if it's a max or a min? How do you know it's a max? Because it's negative, right? This is a frowny face graph. So we have a maximum. All right, so let's work on putting it in this form. What should I do first, do you think? Yeah, let's rearrange it. So let's make negative 2x squared minus 8x plus 3. All right. Good. So I need to take out this negative 2. I cannot complete the square if x has a number in front of it. So I'm going to say negative 2 belongs out here. So then I have x squared. What? Plus 4x. Minus 3 over 2. All right. I heard someone say 1.5. No decimals. Boo, boo, boo. Don't do decimals. Yeah, you're a boo. All right. Oh, you know what? I probably don't need to do that, but I'm going to do it this way anyway. Okay, so let's figure it out. What belongs here? Okay, so what belongs out here? Minus 4, minus 3 over 2. Okay, so let's keep going. I do have to put it back in. So if I have x plus 2 squared, what's this? Could be. Either way, you'll get the same answer. 11? It is 11. Good. Well, because this is 5.5. This is 8 over 2, right? 8 minus 3 is negative 11. Negative 11 over 2. And then I have to multiply it by negative 2. So that cancels out the bottom. So I get 11. Oh, up the front. Thank you. Yes. Sorry. You're right. Thank you. All right. So what is my turning point? Minus 2, 11. Right? Change the sign of this and then keep this. That's my turning point. Um, what is the fancy word for turning point? Vertex. Right. Vertex just means corner, right? So this is the point at the graph in which it turns around again. It's, well, yeah, I know it is. So we're still calling it a vertex, right? It's a fancy point on a graph. Vertex is what the turning point is. So the book is mainly going to ask you for vertex vertices, if you want it plural. Say it again. Oh, yeah. So last year we did derivatives to get turning points because what you do, yeah, that is absolutely another way to do it. You can totally find the coordinates by doing that. Good memory. Well, exactly. I mean, the thing is there are always multiple, well, not always, there are often multiple ways to get your answers, but we're just following this method because that's what they want to test us on this year. We did derivatives last year. We will keep using derivatives later. Don't you worry. There's a whole chapter on differentiation. We will get there. No, not there. <laughs> Calculus. All right. Um, we are now going to do an application of this. So this is where it gets tricky. We're pretty good at using numbers, but when it comes to application questions, we tend to fall apart a little bit. So I have a sheet pen. It's a rectangle. All right, this is X, and I don't know what this is. Oh, sorry, this is a wall. I don't know what's happening to you. All right, guys, focus. So I have a sheet pen. These both are X length, and this is something I don't know. Let's focus, people. All right, so what I'm telling you is that I need, I've need i got 40 metres of fencing. Okay, so I've got three sides. Two of them are X, one of them is something. I have 40 metres. 
So what I'm saying is, what is this length here? It's still supposed to be into the base. <laughs> I'm rubbish at drawing, leave me alone. If these are X, what is this length? Y. I've got 40 meters of fencing. 40 minus 2X. Good. 40 y. minus 2X. I have 40 meters of fencing. These are both X, so that's what's left over to make my third side. So what I want to do, yeah, this is a wall, right? This is my terrible drawing. So that's a wall. No, no, no. What I want to know, what I want to know is my maximum area of my sheet pen. Okay. Okay, good. So I've got X times 40 minus 2X, right? So that is my area there. And if I'm, yeah, so expand. So what do I get? Minus 2X squared. Okay, so let's take out 2X. What do I have left? Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to complete the square. That's a better way to do it. Oh, no, I'll do it like this first. Let's do it like that first. What belongs here? 20. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is complete the square because what I want to do is find what? My maximum value. Is this not a, a frowny face graph? And this will be my maximum area. So if I get my turning point... That will give me the maximum area of this particular question. Yes, absolutely. So that's a really good way to think about it. If it was a smiley face graph, you'd always have a minimum. So if they're asking you for maximum values and you don't have a negative x squared term, you've probably done something wrong. Yeah, that's a really good way to think about it. So if I have negative uh, 2x and... Oh, sorry, actually, I should never take out that X. Why should I not take out the X? Because then I don't have a quadratic, right? And that's the whole point of what I'm doing. So let's take out the negative two and leave it all back there. So I get X squared uh, minus 20. All right, so let's complete this. 20X, thank you. Yeah, no, 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 because I've left the X in. So I've got negative two. What does this become? X, what? Is that right? Yeah, it's minus. Thank you. Ah. <clears throat> okay, good. So X minus 10 squared. What happens out here? But what? I agree with this. Again, I'm just skipping steps because I think most of us are doing it in our head by now. If you did, yeah. If you did more steps, you'd find out. Okay, so now what's the problem though? Why have I written this incorrectly? I need more brackets. This yeah. two belongs on both of these bits. So if I expand this properly, this is minus 200. So thank you. Okay, good. You're all paying attention. So what does the maximum area equal then? Right, that's what this is. Because the turning point is 10, 200, right? That's what this is. This is 10, 200. So 10 is going to be what X is. So this is 10 meters. This is 10 meters. And this is 40 minus 20. So that's 20 meters. And look, that equals 200. 20 times 10 is 200. So 200 meters squared is my maximum area of my sheet pen. Are you with me? So if it's an application question, they're generally, if they're asking for a maximum or they might ask for a minimum value, they're asking for the Y coordinate of the turning point or the vertex. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Great. Why do we do that? Because they're giving you the X values, right? Yeah. Like if they didn't give you the X values, you wouldn't be able to do this. Do you get what I mean? Like you're solving. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we are largely doing application. You'll see today there's some practice things, but then we move on to application style questions. My laptop's going to die.